pretty aware of what have we here. Looks like someone else got into the convenience store sushi. Oh, don't look so surprised. You cannot possibly expect to consume something so existentially questionable as convenience store sushi and not have it give you an adverse reaction. Now, to get you on your feet before you vomit all over the ground in front of my shop. You are capable of standing on your own two legs, yes? At least for a short time. Good. Now, let's get you moving. No, no, not that way. Your vision must be going already. Hardly surprising. Now, in through the door. Here. Sit down here. There's a large chair just behind you. ask you a few questions in order to better treat you. Now, my questions first. I can very likely keep you from dying. Do I have your attention now? Good. I can very likely keep you from dying, but the faster I can ascertain your symptoms and treat them, the less dreadful the side effects will be. Now, how is your vision? Can you see my face clearly? No? Well, that's just as well, perhaps. Are you experiencing any internal pain? Hmm. Any vomiting yet that you can remember? Before you arrived on my doorstep, that is? Not yet. That's good. You've already displayed muscle weakness, so I needn't ask about that. One more thing to check. I'm going to place my hand on your head and neck for a moment. Ah, predictable, really. There is a fire in your body. Your skin is very hot to the touch. There is little time to spare. Remain seated. And I will get something to cool you. I've brought you a large linen towel, soaked in very cold water from my well. I will wrap it around your head to cool it, and arrange the damp ends to cool your neck. That should help combat the fever while I mix up something to treat it with. Ah, yes. Now the questions. I'm sure you'll have many of them. You may as well ask them while I brew up these concoctions for you. Yes, well, as to where you are, you are in my shop. My place of business, inasmuch as I operate a business. The humble home and workshop of Valakash like the Alchemist. And it is I, and I alone, who can save you now from your blunder of eating convenience store sushi. Oh, 
and you should begin to experience significant abdominal pain in a few moments. I will concoct something for that as well, but it will take time. For now, you must endure the pain, and know that it will end in due time, and that you will survive it. If necessary, you may bite down on the ends of that towel against the pain. I will fetch the instruments of my profession. together. Not to worry. That will pass with the rest of the symptoms once I concoct the proper remedies. Whatever possessed you to eat that sushi? Are there not more reputable sources of such food in your lands? It was there and you were hungry. Oh, for the love of Ned. If I had one quintessai for every time I heard that excuse, I could retire to a nice little balloon house in the second ward of Carcery and spend my days drinking nightshade cocktails and ogling the succubi in the marketplace. Hmm. Yes, you definitely want to bite down on the end of that towel now. You know, you're lucky you ended up at my doorstep instead of a less reputable establishment. Perhaps, say... Uh, the wretched den of wickedness and loose morals run by Krokarios, that goat-headed villain of an apothecary in the high market of the fourth ward. Where are you? You asked me that already. You are in my shop. Ah, more general than that. Well... I'm not sure if this would mean much to you, as you are not one of the demon folk, but... I'll get to that. Bear in mind now that if you tell this to anyone, they'll never believe you. How did you get here? Hmm. It would be not unfair to say that you were... thrown? Tossed? Affected by an experience so thoroughly vile, so fundamentally wrong, that it ripped you completely away from everything you know and plunged you into another world. What I am about to tell you may be unsettling. The world you know is not the only aspect of reality. Your entire universe, in fact, is surrounded by a strange layer of quasi-reality normally accessible to humans by means of dreaming and other anomalous feats of mental exertion. It is the place where dreams take place. And beyond that quasi-reality, that which surrounds everything, wrapped around your human universe and the dreamlands, the Chaos Realms. There are nine Chaos Realms, each one stretching out into the infinite, each one bordering all the others, 
and each one joining together in a central location. The magnificent city realm of Tarsary. Each of the Chaos Realms has its own aspect, its own theme. There are nine of them, as I mentioned, and they are as follows. The Realm of Earth, the Realm of Air, the Realm of Water, the Realm of Fire, the Realm of Step, the Realm of Forest, the Realm of Ice, the Realm of Void, and the Realm of Abyss. Where each realm borders and joins another, their themes overlap. One may see many wonders at these conjunctions, and many wonders within the core of each realm as well. I myself live in this comfortable little cottage, keeping my alchemy shop and managing my own affairs in a pleasant little glen on the border between the realms of forest and air. It's quite far from anything important, save that there is a quaint little forest trail that will take one to the outskirts of Karsari in less than a day's travel. For a given value of day, of course. The progression of linear time is a strange thing in the Chaos Realms. Now then, I have finished mixing a few potions and curatives that will address your symptoms. You must get them all down fully in order for them to work. You are likely not going to enjoy the experience, but I can guarantee that it will be less unpleasant than the symptoms you are currently experiencing. First, there is this mixture for the clearing of your vision. It is a very thin potion, easy to swallow, and probably the least repulsive of the cures you must consume if you want to survive this day. There is going to be a rather strong flavor of carrot juice and vinegar if that's any help in preparing you. Regardless, down it must go. So, open up. Don't like the taste, eh? Well, perhaps you'd like to drag your failing carcass down the forest path and all the way into Carcery, and crawl through the dust of the city streets until you find some apothecary with better tasting potions than mine. I imagine Corcarios would happily sell you some sugar water with herbs in it. Perhaps some sweet little honey candies as well. All guaranteed to have you on your feet in no time, and with a hint of mint on your breath for the rest of the day, into the bargain. Pah, that charlatan. Like as not, he'd sell you some temporary cure-all, then drug you and sell you to one of the nobility as a plaything. He's done it before, to my certain knowledge, and he'll do it again. Now quit your spluttering. The next potion is a much smaller dose, but it's going to be more viscous and syrupy than the first, and you're really not going to like the taste of this one. The best that can be said for it is that it doesn't taste as bad as when I first invented the recipe, but it still smells like old mud and tastes like pressed grass cuttings and cricket juice. But it will help to put some strength back into your flaccid muscles, and get rid of that watery, weak feeling which no doubt pervades most of your body. Yes, it will do you good, but you'd better get it down soon, before your vision returns fully and you're able to see what this potion really looks like. I've brewed it to be effective, not pretty. I told you, you wouldn't like it. 
Meditate upon this vile experience while I fetch the next potion. potion was horrible, I have some unpleasant news for you. Why can't they taste better? You ask such things of me. Don't you think that if there was a way to make them taste better without ruining the effectiveness of the medicine, I'd have mixed it that way? And even if there were a way, good medicine truly effective medicine needs to taste unpleasant in order to be most effective. The unpleasantness is part of the cure. Take the humble senna plant, for example, used in the treatment of complaints of the bowels. A very small dose only is required, and it tastes very unpleasant. For if it were pleasing to the tongue, any fool wanting to use it on their own would mix too much and drink too much, and spend the next several hours turning most of their insides into outsides. So it must, necessarily must, taste bad. I see you peering and blinking at me. Does that mean your vision is returning? Good, good. Now drink this horrible swill before the smell of it fouls the room. Good, good. You're awake again. That wasn't so bad now, was it? What was in it, you ask? Well now, I can't be giving away all my alchemical secrets, can I? I will tell you this much. That the snails have been de-shelled before being boiled, that the mushroom cap juice is only a few days old, and that the slimy aftertaste is a natural side effect of the secret insect-based ingredients that make up most of the potion. Also, there is some black rice sugar mixed in to cover the taste of the salamander bile. I imagine you're feeling a bit nauseous just now. Relax. It will pass in a moment. Your vision will swim one final time. And your stomach will do a few flips and flops, and then your eyes will clear and your innards will settle down again. You might even feel like standing up. Ah, yes. Now that your vision has returned, I suppose you'll want a better look around the place. Normally, I would say something about the impoliteness of staring. But in your case, I'll make an exception. You've already had a deplorably rough time of things today. Seeing a tall, gaunt, bandage-wrapped figure looming over you is probably not the most reassuring sight right now. Be easy in your mind. I'm not one of those body snatchers or kidnappers who prey upon wayward humans and eat them, or enslave them or sell them off to some other demon for nefarious purposes. I'm only here to help you. Or rather, you are here only to be helped by me. And may I add that all of these cloths and bandages I have wrapped myself in are merely to cover and conceal a natural condition of the skin. It is nothing contagious, I think. I should speak to Dr. Ngimba about that the next time I write to him. Can a human contract or carry demonic leprosy? It's an interesting question. So, you needn't recoil from me in fear. I am no monster, 
nearly a demon shaped rather like yourself, only somewhat taller and much thinner, and completely wrapped up in thin strips of cloth. Nothing more. Now, this most recent dosing you've received, you should already feel it coursing through your veins. It will fight and reduce the fever in your body, and also rid you of the greater part of the pain you are experiencing. Feeling better already, then? You will be happy to know, then, that there is only one more dose to take, and your treatment will be complete. And that dose is this. It is a bolus. Well, two, really. A bolus is a sort of rolled up ball of whatever substance meant to carry a dose of medicine into the body without first being broken down in the stomach. These two in particular look like little rolled balls of mud. The glistening coating on the outside is a layer of hellhound grease. You're not going to like the taste, but I assure you it is far preferable to what it covers up. Which I am not going to describe to you. Best that you don't know. Regardless, the purpose of this last dose is to counteract the anomalous effects of that horrible sushi you were so foolish as to consume. Something really ought to be done about that entire class of food. Such a delicate and delicious category of consumables. It should never be dragged so low as to be sold in such dubious and sketchy locations as convenience stores. There are very few things indeed which can so blatantly rip aside the veil between worlds and propel one of your folk out of your very reality and hurl them across the fabric of dreams and into the chaos realms. Though I have heard some mention made from time to time about this sort of thing happening with... What did that serpent call them? Delivery trucks. And what was the word he used? He had a word for the event. What was it? Isekai, perhaps. I forget. It's not important just now. You. You must swallow these two round, grease-coated balls of... Oh, never mind. Just gulp them down. No chewing, mind you. The grease will ease the swallowing. Trust me, you don't want to taste what's under it. And the other one. Go on. Splendid. Presently, you'll begin to feel drowsy. There's an added ingredient in the hellhound grease that has that effect. It will help you to relax in preparation for what the dose itself will do once it activates. Ah, well, you see. This final dose of treatment will be what sends you home. Just as the horrible abomination of sane reality that is the convenience store sushi has plucked you from your own world and dropped you unceremoniously here, so this bolus will send you back where you belong. I think we shall not meet again, human, but if we do, and if it turns out that once again, it is as a result of you having consumed some monstrously anomalous substance as you have this day, I say, if you end up here again for the same reason, I shall have some very choice words to say to you on that account. And remember, if you tell any of your folk about what has transpired here, they'll never believe you. Now, you just sit here and let all the potions and such perform their various cures. I must attend to some things out in my garden. You'll begin to drift away presently, and then you will no longer be my problem. And in future, be a little more discriminating when choosing what foods to eat. Convenience store sushi forsooth.